Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. What happens to a garden when you don't look at it for an entire week? Let's go take a tour. So I've been gone. I've been out of town for a week. I cut my grass. I went to Florida. I went to Alabama. And I came home yesterday and I haven't seen my garden for an entire week. My son has been here tending it for me. But now i got to cut the grass again. And man... Things have gone crazy, absolutely crazy. Let's go take a, a June 1st, beginning of June garden tour and see what's growing. All right, let's start in our first bed here. I can see that my uh, Tabasco peppers are putting on some fruits now. That's encouraging. Look at all these blossoms. These are heat-loving uh, plants, and I'm glad to see them growing well. Got some fruits here. These are... Um, a nice sweet pepper and I'm really liking what I'm seeing there a little bit of bug damage here and there's I think the culprit maybe right there he flew off <clears throat> now we had almost an entire week of rain and so these gardens did not require any um, irrigation in fact they probably got too much water and uh, wow look at those these are called Jedi they're a jalapeno we're gonna harvest those Those are stuffing size. That's nice, huh? Jedi jalapeno. Huge. Eggplant, cheerful in the heat. Maybe it needs a little bit of nitrogen. This poor little tomato over here, putting on some fruit. But uh, yeah, this one's about done. I didn't up pot this one or put it in the ground. So uh, yeah, it's struggling. My dwarf tomatoes, they're done. They've put on some fruit. Eggplant got some fruit on there we need to harvest that that's awesome look at that eggplant in a pot and I'm gonna get a few out of it this will continue to grow through the summer you can see the bugs do like it wow the mint took off it wasn't like this when I left it uh, here's my sweet potato slips that we started last week and they're taking off just fine and uh, there'll be some sweet potatoes down in there bell peppers got some bell peppers this plant looks like it's struggling a little bit in that pot we'll need to come and fertilize uh, you can see that there's a lack of nitrogen in these pots because uh, well I haven't been very uh, religious in fertilizing them so my basil there's a little yellow the parsley is doing just fine except that little yellow branch there but hit that with some nitrogen some fish emulsion and we'll be fine look at the weeds I've got this um, purslane growing all through here and yeah, my onions, they're uh, getting choked out a little bit. Got a lot of nut sedge coming up here and there. This stuff I don't like, but uh, it's, it's part of life. Another bell pepper over here. Those are ready to be harvested. Look at those. Those are nice big bell peppers. I normally don't get big bell peppers because I grow peppers in pots, and that doesn't do well. You don't get big bell peppers in pots. And bell peppers are not as prolific as some smaller kinds, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm actually real happy with that plant. Right here next to it is a sprawling tomato. I think this is a Juliet. It came up volunteer, and I'm just letting it sprawl. Putting on a lot of fruit, and uh, yeah, that's that's a bonus food. Right next to this other pepper here, what is this? Uh, this is a uh, Carmen. This is a sweet pepper, and I'm going to wait till these get red before harvesting them. But uh, yeah, the pepper plants, man, they're doing great this year. I'm really impressed with all the peppers. Another eggplant we put in for the summer garden, and we're going to have to baby these along because they're looking like they need some nitrogen too. So, uh, yeah, I'm real happy with what's going on here. Now, I don't know what that guy is right there on that leaf, but he doesn't look like a friend of the garden. Laying eggs, chomping things. Look at this nut sedge. Wow, that's a big one. I'll have to get these out of the garden. They'll take over real quick. Now the star of my garden is the tomato plants. I uh, have tons and tons of these cherry tomatoes. Look at all these cherry tomatoes down in here. And my son's been harvesting them for me. And they just keep producing. And right before I left, I actually did um, uh, prune them. But you can see they're, they're going to need another pruning. And I'm going to need to drop them down again and shift them over. You can see I have begun shifting. And... So the plant starts growing in that spot, but now it's, it's moved over. And once I get all these limbs trimmed up, I can uh, shift them some more. 
But even, man, look at that. That is beautiful. This is stunning right there. Incredible. Look at these granaderos. These are big enough to start attracting the birds now. But, uh, yeah, you can harvest them when they start looking orange like that, and they'll ripen up inside. So the granaderos, these are like baseball-sized romas, and they're good paste tomatoes. That's impressive. But look how, look how productive they are. So here's the deal though, look at all these blossoms up here. So you can see these, these have been pollinated and these may or may not have been pollinated. But now that it's heating up and the summer is about to be upon us in earnest, these plants will not pollinate at certain temperatures, 90 degrees or so when it's consistently in the 90s. And these plants will basically be done and I'll pull them out. Even though I could put shade cloth over them and keep them nursed along through the summer, possibly but uh yeah i've got a summer crop to grow so these will these days are numbered on these plants and that's why i chose this variety that's so productive so i could get a big harvest while i still had time right here on this dad's sunset i've got a beautiful tomato right here but then you pick it and you see oh no the birds have got it the birds got this one and the birds got those and once the birds get them the bugs get into them and yeah it's a loss down here i've got a few that are nice and ready to take inside. So uh, I'll be coming in and harvesting the ones that aren't bug damaged, like that one. Isn't that, isn't that frustrating? The bugs get in there because the birds have made a, a way for them to get in there. So I'm just gonna pick a few of these. Like this one's got a little orange on it, that will ripen indoors. It's got a little bug damage there, um, or bird damage, but the bugs haven't found that one yet. This is real frustrating when you're away. You can't keep on top of the ones that are ripening up and these big tomatoes that ripen up like that attract the bugs, or the birds. The birds bite a hole in them, and that's an inroad for the bugs. And those are a loss. So basically, every tomato that's orange on this plant, except two, has been hit by the bugs and birds, and is a loss. And that's frustrating. Yeah, growing large tomatoes with birds around is, uh, is difficult. I, in the past, have left these on the vine, thinking that, well, you know, the bugs will stay where they're already, where they've got the path of least resistance. But yeah, I'm not so sure that's a, that's a real thing, but it makes me feel better. I'll leave a few of those on. If you remember, I showed you how to protect from the birds with bird netting. So we do have a wonderful vine ripened tomato. Look at that. Not a, that's, that's about the most perfect tomato you're going to find. And there's another one in there that's even more ripe. Let's get that one too. This is what makes me happy. Let's see. Come on now. There we go. Wow. Look at that. That's awesome. Yes. Hey, what are you doing? You having a tomato? Is it good? Huh? Is it good? Yes, ma'am. Vegetarian dog. Here is a brandy wine. This is the original Brandywine strain, Suttoth strain. If I can get that off of there, I'll take that in and I'll get to enjoy one of the best tasting tomatoes there are. The birds already enjoyed that one. Isn't that sad? When you're away, you can't stay on top of harvesting when, when they look like that. They're not quite ripe and they don't attract the birds so much when they're like that. And you can get them in. But once they start to ripen up like those down there, they start to attract the birds. Here's something you need to see. That on that tomato right there, that is a leaf-footed bug. And they're not welcome in my garden. Get out of here, dude. There's a lot of them in there. They are piercing bugs and will actually cause damage to your fruits. Well, I'm going to get some of these tomatoes in so that uh, we can enjoy the harvest and the bounty of all our work before the birds get it. Always, always weed as you go, and you'll have a much nicer time of it. All right, let's see here. I'm going to take all these in down here because they can ripen inside. And we're going to take this one here, too. It's close enough. Isn't that a nice flower? Look at that. Beautiful. We're still recording.
man. It's crazy. There we go. That's good. Got some over here. That's about where you want them. These uh, Edox cherry tomatoes don't seem to attract the bird's attention as much as the larger ones. And uh, they're very prolific. So uh, you get a nice harvest out of these. I'm impressed. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. There's one the birds got. Can't win them all. But with a prolific variety like this, you don't really have to win them all. You can come in here and harvest all your tomatoes. Look at that. And leave a few for the bugs and birds. It's inevitably going to happen. And I've got some unusual bug I've never seen attacking some of these tomatoes. Let me see if I can find you one. Nope. It's just crazy. I can't believe how many tomatoes are on these plants. I mean, can you see this? Every, every rung has at least a dozen cherry tomatoes on it. At least a dozen of these wonderful tomatoes. Wow. And they keep producing. When you don't keep your beans picked, they get huge like this and they stop producing. Although these have more flowers on them. I'll need to come pick these. That's a task for when the sun goes down. It's a little hot out here to be standing out like a chump picking beans. Got my onions here that need to be harvested. And uh, I usually dry these onions, these green onions, and put them away. Bush beans are producing. They need to be picked again. I can see some right down in there. But look at the cucumbers. You walk away from a cucumber for 10 minutes and it gets overripe. See that big orange zeppelin down in there? Let me show you. I can see that I've got powdery mildew already. There we go. That's an overripe cucumber. That is compost material. You leave it for a week and they get away from you. There are some ripe ones down in there, or some good ones down in there. Getting a little big, but i got to clear these out so they'll keep producing. Now you might think that's a waste, that you go away for a week and your cucumbers get overripe, but uh, that's not a waste, that's going right into the compost bin. If you're a seed saver, you want them to get nice and ripe like this, because you can see inside the seeds start to get large whenever they get ripe. And so, let them get so ripe that they're kind of mushy, and you can take these seeds out of there, uh, soak them for a while to get the gel off of them, and then lay them out on a paper towel and dry them, and you can grow this variety next year. Now, this particular variety is a, hair, is, is a hybrid, so I won't get true-to-type plants from these seeds. So, really, all these seeds are for is compost. But I do have an heirloom back in there, and none of those heirlooms are, get, are getting overripe. In fact, they're a little slow producers. They're a little slower to produce uh, than this hybrid, and so they're not ripening up quickly, and that's good for me if you have to be away for a while. Yeah, that's good. I made pickles with these, and the pickles are good. Being away for a week also uh, makes you patient with your pickling and fermenting, and wow, they taste delicious. If you've ever watched my pruning videos on these muscadine grapes, it looks pretty radical that you take these vines that are so long now, and you take them down to a couple inch little shoots, but look, going to get a lot of fruit out of that this year. All these are essentially baby grapes. Baby muscadine grapes. This one is a, a bronze variety that's very delicious. And then down here I've got my dark variety. And it's putting on fruit as well. And uh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. These will be ready in the end of August, September. These will be loaded with fruit. And it'll be fun to come out here and pick them as they ripen up. The Malabar spinach starts that we did in the last video, they're taking off just fine. They look perfect. Uh, same with the uh, sweet potato slips. Wherever I put them in, they're doing just fine. Herb garden, growing like crazy. Time to get out here and cut some herbs and dry some herbs. Fig fruits are getting plump and big. 
and all my fig trees that survived the freeze, which was most of them, are putting on a lot of fruit. Look at these peppers. Wow. This is a red flame cayenne. Look how big that cayenne pepper is. I don't think I've ever seen a cayenne pepper that large. The borage is looking a little ragged in the heat, but it perks up every evening. But look at this. This is safflower. These plants are looking ragged down below, but they're very tall. And they're all putting on these flower heads. And I think that's beautiful. And these flowers are, ouch, they've got spines on them. These flowers will make seeds, and those seeds are where you get safflower oil. I just have them here for uh, pollinator attractors. Man, everything's taken off like crazy here. All that rain we had has caused my squash plants to get a little anemic looking. Probably because they've, uh, they're sitting in soil that's not very well draining. So I actually probably need to hit those with a bit of nitrogen to green them up before they hit that compost way down in that pumpkin pit. That is a pumpkin pit. That is Seminole pumpkin right there. Over here, the apple trees are doing just fine. Um, had some pests on the apple trees, but I don't see them anymore. Watermelon's growing in a patch of weeds there and it's starting to look pretty good, sprawling out. My uh, apple trees, again, they look great. Here's one that's got some trouble. Need to find out what's going on here. Yeah, I need to come out and look at this when it's not as hot. That is unfortunate. <clears throat> Again, I think some vine borer damage has been done in here. Those yellow leaves look vine borer-ish, but this is a, a butternut hybrid, and it's hybridized with a Seminole pumpkin. It is a cucurbita moshata which means as this vine runs along the ground, I can put dirt on the nodes where they touch the ground and they'll take root. And as they take root, well, the vine borer can destroy part of the plant. I actually see a vine down in there that has, a, has been drilled. And uh, well, it won't matter to this part down here because that'll be a whole nother plant. So I'm letting these sprawl and hoping I'll get some pumpkins from them. This bed over here responded well to the rain and it looks like my uh, blackberry there, this Osage thornless blackberry is going to do fine. This one really took off with all that rain. That's encouraging. Goji berry going crazy, as tall as I am. Yeah, I don't think I can move that now. Its roots have probably gone out of the pot and into the ground. Here's an old, old pepper plant with some uh, wood sorrel growing in there. Yeah, let's clear that out. Look how green that is. That is an old plant, and I'm, I'm liking that green. I did put a little Malabar spinach in here, too. It's looking fine. Yeah, well, there we go. Leave your garden for a week, and you come back, it looks totally different. So there we go, another video. Thank you for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hope you'll subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell, like us on Instagram and Facebook. And hey, may your thumbs always be green.